Joining me now to discuss all of this is National Senator and former Resources Minister Matt Canavan. Thank you very much for your time this Sunday evening. No worries, Shari. How are you? Yeah, well, thank you. Now, I want to first ask your reaction to the, to the news I, I've just broken on air, that China is, is now not expected uh, to oppose this inquiry, this inquiry that they've been threatening Australia over and, and imposing tariffs and trade bans. And, and now, because there seems to be overwhelming global support for the inquiry, uh, at this point, it doesn't look like uh, they're going to uh, reject it. Well, it's welcome uh, news, uh, Shari, as, as you described it. This should be a routine uh, course of action after any major health crisis, particularly one as severe as this. Uh, uh, now, of course, we'll need to make sure and see uh, the Chinese government fully cooperate with such an inquiry. Uh, uh, we, we, we have seen through a lot of your reports, Shari, that uh, some of the, the conduct and some of the uh, 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 follow-up uh, action from the Chinese government has raised a lot of questions uh, about their handling of this uh, and how they're potentially abusing and using the situation to further their own ends. Uh, what we're, we're focused on in this country, in Australia, uh, is doing what we can uh, to improve health outcomes here in Australia and around the world and getting to the bottom of how this thing started uh, is a very important way to achieve that. Yeah. Look, our, the, Australia's early call, leading call uh, for an inquiry has already had an economic impact uh, in, in terms of, um, you know, the beef exports, uh, which have been banned, and potentially the tariff on barley. You know, we've, we've seen business leaders who've said it's time for us to quieten down so that, that, you know, we don't suffer this sort of economic hit. What do you think? How should Australia best respond to China? You know, should we quieten down, or, or do you think we should be even more vocal in defending our sovereignty? Well, the first thing is uh, Scott Morrison and the government have been massively vindicated by their call uh, from the outpouring of support that has occurred from other countries in the world. Uh, uh, so I don't think it's a bad day at the office when we get uh, uh, tens of other countries coming in, major countries joining us in such a call. Australia will be recognised for that leadership and that will help us. Uh, with, uh, with making better friendships overseas. The second point to make is I think it's really important to ask those people who say somehow we should uh, tone it down or do things differently exactly what they want us to do. Uh, uh, are they asking the Australian government to, to trade off and change its foreign policy settings just so we can sell some more product to another country? Because it's really important if you're going to put an alternative view, spell it out in black and white. Uh, there's a lot of ducking and weaving. Uh, from the likes of Joel Fitzgibbon and Twiggy Forrest out there, who seem to suggest all we need to do is, uh, is smile a bit more, zip up our, uh, our lips a bit more, and everything will be fine and dandy. It's a load of absolute rubbish. Uh, uh, if we're going to have stand up for our, our independent, uh, well thought through views, uh, sometimes countries might not like that. And I am going to stand up for our sovereignty and our independence uh, uh, over trade any day of the week. If we don't speak out about Australian values, if we don't defend ourselves, then aren't we adopting, um, you know, the, 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 the Chinese uh, values of, of censorship, of silencing free speech that, that we really oppose? Well, I'd put it this way, Shari. Uh, the reason I support trade, I'm a big supporter of the resources industry as a former resources minister, and obviously uh, we need market access to, to deliver those results. I uh, support the development of our nation. I support the trade agreements we've signed with other countries. Uh, but all of those things, I support all those things because they deliver you the prosperity that can give you independence and freedom in life. Uh, I don't support mining because it's a great thing in and of itself. I support it because by creating jobs, by giving people an independent livelihood, then they're independent and free uh, to chart out their own course in life and we are independent and free as a country, as a prosperous one. If we are going to trade off our independence and freedom uh, uh, for the trade, well, it defeats the whole purpose of establishing the trade and going after it in the first place. Uh, so it's not something that should be on the table and it's, uh, I think the government has done an excellent job here of charting this course. Uh, while some, some, not all, but some in the Labor Party have been, as I say, ducking and weaving, not really clear what they're saying or suggesting, uh, but we've been very clear, very determined, and, and uh, all credit to Scott Morrison's yeah. it's delivering results. Look, if you look at the figures, over the past two decades, China's become Australia's largest trading partner, uh, adding to the, our prosperity, as you say, and a third of our exports now 
uh, go to China worth uh, an estimated $137 billion. Do you think uh, this crisis has shown us that we need to diversify more? And should we be building relationships with more like-minded countries who will not be threatening us uh, with trade bans? Well, I think it's been clear for a while we should diversify our markets. The action we've seen the Chinese government take in the last couple of weeks is not unprecedented. They banned 10 abattoirs a couple of years ago. Uh, they've been playing around with coal in, Australian coal imports for a number of years. So it's been clear for a while we should diversify. That's why I was a big supporter of the Adani investment, or one of the major reasons, because it was, it's a big uh, deal uh, in establishing a new relationship with India. Uh, but obviously this, this particular crisis has underlined the need uh, to, to stabilise uh, what have been fragile supply chains across the world, especially in things like medicines. But the next crisis is probably not going to be a health one. Uh, we've got to make sure we, we do protect and secure those supply chains. Uh, I think it makes sense to diversify markets overseas. But it also, one thing we shouldn't forget is if we can't sell as much over there, we should start to make more things here. Uh, we can uh, actually uh, rebuild our manufacturing industry. We do already do and are a major producer of steel. We could do more of that if we can't sell the iron ore and coke and coal as much to China. And we could produce more aluminium, produce more food value-added products here with the raw, raw resources we have. That would create jobs here, value here, and be a good thing for our country. Yeah. Uh, Matt, China has now finally admitted to actually destroying virus samples uh, in the early days of the outbreak when they were trying to cover up uh, news of a, of a new coronavirus. How do you think China's Chinese authorities and, and the President uh, Xi Jinping have conducted themselves uh, during this whole affair? Well, as I said earlier, Shari, there's obviously questions to be asked. Uh, uh, my understanding of those reports is the Chinese government is suggesting that those samples were destroyed for, for health reasons because they couldn't be properly secured. But, uh, again, that's why there is a need for a proper inquiry here to... Uh, to get to the bottom of, of what exactly has happened uh, in this case because we sure as hell don't want to have to go through this again. Uh, uh, and and uh, ob obviously there was at least uh, some cover-up at the time by the Chinese government. There was certainly repression of whistleblowers within the medical uh, system. Uh, and uh, that's something that should be exposed because exposure is the best way to try and make sure that doesn't happen again. Because next time something like this happens... If, uh, if the Chinese authorities or other authorities know and fear they're going to be exposed from any cover-up, they won't do it in the first place. Mm. I've done a series of articles that you referred to at the start of the show over the past few weeks on collaborations on highly sensitive scientific research between Australian scientists and Chinese scientists who are actually employed by the Chinese military or the People's Liberation Army. Uh, so th this isn't, you know, a story about concern about just collaboration, international collaboration. This is collaboration with the Chinese military. This is happening at the CSIRO, I've revealed, and also at the University of Sydney, where I had a front page story uh, a few days ago that exposed um, that, a, that a very distinguished study, peer-reviewed study on the origins of the coronavirus actually relied on genetic sequencing and virus isolation that was done by a People's Liberation Army lab and a PLA colonel was actually thanked for his substantial contribution in the study. Are you concerned about these revelations and what do you think the Morrison government should be doing here to ensure that there are no national security issues? Yeah, well, Shara, your reports, uh, along with others we've seen over the past year, have raised serious concerns about the uh, use with which research, joint research, that occurs between China and other Western nations is being put to uh, for potentially military, uh, uh, counterintelligence uh, applications and, as you've suggested here in this case, in, in terms of health as well. Uh, I, I think the reports are serious enough that we should suspend uh, uh, research cooperation with uh, Chinese government-connected researchers. Uh, now, that might, there might be exceptions for that, particularly, obviously, where we need to respond to a, an ongoing crisis. Uh, uh, where, like the coronavirus, but if it's more general and not urgent research, I think we need to know a lot, lot more about these connections and with what use that such intellectual property is put to. The Chinese uh, government does not have a stellar record when it comes to intellectual property across all types of applications, uh, but here, given they go to potential national security issues, uh, we must secure that first before we continue cooperation, in my view. Yeah.